Thank you for accessing the Planning for Prevention webinar brought to you by the State of Ohio's Take Charge with Low Program and HealthWave. The purpose of this webinar is to discuss how you can take charge of your health and well-being and to provide you with helpful tools to assist you along with this process. It's important to remember that your behaviors significantly impact your life. Making well-being a primary factor in your decisional balance every day is imperative. This can be focused on in items like wearing your seatbelt, making sure that you cover your cough, bringing sanitizer with you um, when you don't have access to uh, facilities where you can wash your hands frequently. The next thing you want to look at is do you have a healthcare home? Meaning, do you have a primary care physician that you re regularly visit for routine checkups as well as sick visits? And if you have any pre-existing conditions, uh, do you have a medical care team? Meaning, if you have diabetes, do you have an endocrinologist? Do you have a specialist that helps work with your specific conditions? And lastly, are you up to date on appropriate screenings and vaccinations? Screenings are tests that look for diseases before you have symptoms. Screening tests can find diseases early when they're easier to treat. You can get some screenings in your doctor's office and others need special equipment, so you may need to go to a different office or clinic. Some of the conditions that doctors commonly screen for include breast cancer and cervical cancer in women, colorectal cancer, diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol and osteoporosis, overweight and obesity. Which test you need depends on your age, your sex, family history, and whether you have risk factors for certain diseases. After a screening test, ask when you will get the results and to whom you should speak with regarding your results. Also, later today, we will discuss how to prepare for your next doctor's visit and important things that you should take in your notes such as if you've noticed any abnormal developments in your health. Sometimes we have items that are forgotten. We remember that we need to check our blood pressure and get our cholesterol checked, but a lot of times we eliminate or we ignore our teeth and our eyes. It's really important that you make sure that you take care of each of your bodily organs as well as you can. Usually, you'll go to the dentist every six months or as needed per your personal history or doctor recommendations. Keep in mind that tooth abscesses, gum disease, and gingivitis can cause heart disease, and they can also lend to clogged arteries, stroke, respiratory disease, tooth decay, and tooth loss, as well as pneumonia. Remember to take care of those eyes. Many eye and vision problems have no obvious signs or symptoms. As a result, individuals are often aware that pro unaware that problems exist. Early diagnosis and treatment of eye and vision problems are important for main maintaining good vision and eye health, and when possible, preventing vision loss. It's recommended that adults aged 18 to 60 years old have a recommended examination every two years for any of those adults 18 to 60 years old who are asymptomatic or risk-free. That means not someone who's wearing contacts or glasses at that time or experiencing any signs listed on the slides that you need vision correction. For anyone that does fall into those high-risk categories, you will want to go every one year. Patients at risk include those with diabetes, hypertension, or family history of ocular disease such as glaucoma and macular degeneration. Patients at risk also include those working in occupations that are highly demanding, visually, or eye hazardous, those taking prescriptions or non-prescription drugs with ocular side effects, any individuals wearing contact lenses, anyone who has had eye surgery, and anyone that has other health concerns or conditions. It's also important to eat right to protect your sight. You've heard carrots are good for your eyes, but eating a diet rich in fruits and vegetables particularly dark leafy greens such as spinach, kale, or collard greens is important for keeping your eyes healthy too. Research has also shown that there are eye benefits from eating fish high in omega-3 fatty acids such as salmon, tuna, and halibut. Also, make sure you're frequently giving those eyes a rest. 
if you spend a lot of time at the computer or focus on any one thing, you sometimes forget to blink and your eyes can get fatigued. Try the 20-20-20 rule. Every 20 minutes, look away, for about, look away about 20 feet in front of you for 20 seconds. This can help reduce eye strain. Make sure that you take specific steps before your next checkup. Review your family health history. Are there any new conditions or diseases that have occurred in your close relatives since your last visit? If so, let your health care provider know. Family history might influence your risk of developing heart disease, stroke, diabetes, or cancer. Your provider will assess your risk for disease based on your family history and other factors. Your provider may also recommend things you can do to help prevent disease such as exercising more, changing your diet, or using screening tests to help detect diseases early. Find out if you're due for any screenings or vaccinations. We'll be going over a helpful tool later on this presentation that can help wean out those vaccinations and screenings uh, for you. And then make sure you always keep an immunization history. Anytime you get a booster shot or any kind of immunization, it's helpful to know the last time you've had that. Write down a list of issues and questions to take with you. Review any existing health problems and take note of any changes. Have you noticed any body changes, including lumps or skin changes? Are you having pain, dizziness, fatigue, problems with urine or stool, or menstrual cycle changes? Have your eating habits changed? Are you experiencing depression, anxiety, trauma, stress, or sleeping problems? If so, note when the changes begin, how it's different from before, and any other observations that you think may be helpful. Be honest with your provider. If you haven't been taking your, rec your medication as directed, exercising as much, or anything else, say so. You may be at risk for certain diseases and conditions because of how you live, work, and play. Your provider develops a plan based partly on what you say you do. Help ensure that you get the best guidance by providing accurate information. Be sure to write down your questions beforehand. Once you're in the office or exam room, it can be hard to remember everything you want to know before you leave the room. Consider your future. Are there any specific health issues that you would like to discuss? Do you want to quit smoking or lose weight and maybe even discuss infertility? These are all items that you should discuss with your physician earlier rather than later. Now that you're fully prepared for your doctor's visit, you need to know what steps you should take as a consumer during the visit. You want to remember the three items listed on the screen. Give information, get information, and take information. Ask questions while you're at your visit. Take notes. Get brochures and literature from your doctor's office regarding any of your conditions or medications. Oftentimes, we get so much information during an office visit that we forget the information when we leave. Taking materials such as notes, brochures, and literature home with you will help to refresh you on the important details of your condition or medication. And just like we said in the initial slide, make sure that your plan is safe. Wear helmets, seatbelts, sunscreen, and insect repellent. Wash your hands to stop the spread of germs. Avoid smoking and breathing in other people's smoke. Build safe and healthy relationships with family and friends, and be ready for emergencies. Be sure to have supply kits available in your basement, in your car. Make a plan and be informed. And ask yourself if you are currently engaging in any high-risk activities. If so, how can you fix that? So in summary, we want you to get healthy by taking action. Ask yourself the following. Is my health a top priority? If your answer is no, why not? And then discuss with yourself, what long-term impact would this make in my life? Also ask yourself, what steps am I taking for a longer, healthier, and happier life? What can you do to improve your quality of life in the long term? 
as well as in the short term. We have some great resources available to help you uh, maintain your health and improve your health and as well prepare you for those doctor's visits you have coming up. Be sure to complete your well-being assessment, which is accessible via the Take Charge Live Well website. Once you've completed your well-being assessment, you can print your WBA report. This will provide you with a helpful analysis of your current health status, areas for improvement, recommended screenings, and vaccinations. It is recommended that you take this docu document to your next physician's visit to discuss results as well as any suggested plan of action to maintain and improve your health. Additional resources are listed on the screen. The My Family Health Portrait, which is a tool from the Surgeon General, is a great way to pull your family history, health history into a family tree. Screening tests for women and recommended screening tests for men. Another great resource is the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality. They have a great document called Questions to Ask Your Doctor. You can print that by accessing the link listed here. And in general, the AHRQ is a great resource to help you become a more informed healthcare consumer. You can also compile your medical family tree with the Mayo Clinic's tool listed here. And then always remember to refer to your Spring 2013 Pathways to make sure that you're up to date on any of your no copay guidelines for those vaccinations and screening. 